the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And today on the news at noon, violence swept across the district over the weekend. What the police chief is saying this afternoon. And it just turned downright beautiful over the weekend, and it's continuing out there today. How long do we keep this warm and sunny weather around? We'll have your forecast in just a bit. And later, a tough loss for the Washington Commanders, how the team plans to bounce back. And good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for the News at Noon. I'm Mark Hall. Let's take a live look outside in the, the district. The sun is shining as you take a look at the National Monument. Meteorologist Damon Matson joined us with the latest check in the forecast. And Damon, you said during the show open that nice weather will continue. And any time we see the sun on a Monday, it's certainly a good start to the work week. It's a bonus, Mark. That is for sure, especially after the cloudy stretch of weather we had pretty much all of last week. Mother Nature treating us well to kick off this first full week of October. And yes, that sunshine is having an effect. Look at our temperatures right now. We are warming up and quick. We are in the 70s already across much of the DMV. Low 70s as you head out to the west near Winchester, Martinsburg and Cumberland and DC to the east here along Interstate 95 already reaching the upper 70s and we reached the low 80s on your Sunday afternoon and that is certainly not out of the question going to happen within the hour in some parts of the region here as we really do warm things up with how sunny it is going to continue to be and yeah this satellite and radar picture cannot get any clearer for us here all is quiet and it's going to stay that way as long as our friend high pressure it sticks around and there it is sitting right over Ohio and Western Pennsylvania right nearby and it's not moving all that much. So yes, that means a continuation of this very sunny and warm weather, at least in the short term for sure. Here we go through the rest of your afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. Some of us may not even see a single cloud in the sky for the rest of the day. There are those temperatures. Yes, climbing up into the low 80s. You'll feel the warmth if you're out there in that direct sunlight, but no humidity to talk about, so it will still feel comfortable as we go throughout the rest of the day. Well, we can enjoy this beautiful weather while we have it, no doubt, but the question is when should we expect some rainfall to start rolling back into the picture? We'll have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. And this weekend saw a wave of violence across the district with five shootings over the span of six hours. DC News Now's Liberty Zabala is at police headquarters with how they are working to get things under control. Well, it was a very violent weekend and officers are struggling to keep up. This is the first time since 1997 that the district has experienced more than 200 homicides before reaching October. So let's break down all of the shootings that happened within hours of each other overnight. The first happened just before 11 p.m. on Shepherd Street Northwest and police said to watch out for two black sedans fleeing that scene. Then just before midnight on M Street Northwest, a man was shot and suffered serious injuries. Next at 12:30 p.m., a teenage girl was shot near Howard University. She suffered non-life threatening injuries. Then just before 1 a.m., a man was grazed by a bullet on Wayne Place Southeast. And the last and final shooting officers responded to was on 13th Street Southeast. Officers say a 52 year old woman was killed in a domestic incident. A 26 year old suspect was arrested. And this wave of shootings comes after acting police chief Pamela Smith addressed the city council as part of her nomination process about how she plans to keep the city safe. We have seen too many groups of youth and young adults committing strings of carjackings and robbery. From my first day as the acting chief of police, I have been working with the MPD team and our partners to develop and deploy tactics that will help us to interrupt these patterns and make our streets safer for everyone in Washington, D.C. And Smith also said that officers will continue their weekly community walks and 60 new closed circuit cameras will be installed by the end of this year. For now in Northwest D.C., Liberty Zabala, D.C. News Now. Liberty, thank you. In Fairfax County, police are looking for a person of interest after a woman's body was found inside of a tent. Police found the body on Saturday near Burke Lake Park in Fairfax Station. Police identified the woman as 40-year-old 
Kara Abruscado. Now, investigators are now asking for the public's help locating Rami El Saeed. They say that he's a person of interest in this case, and there's no word on how the two knew each other. Well, the Washington Commanders found themselves in an overtime thriller yesterday. It was a big divisional matchup on the road against the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles. Well, the Commanders had a chance to win, win with the ball in overtime, but they were unable to score, and then all Philadelphia had to do was just kick a field goal to win it 34-31. to 31. Head coach Ron Rivera reacting to a tough loss. That's what you're looking for is that kind of growth, that you do something, you make some mistakes, you come back and you play off. It's a hell of a performance by Sam. He bounced back. You know, he learned from last week. He grew and he got better. And uh, it was reflected in the way he played. It was reflected in the way he, he led our offense. There are a lot of positive things that we're going to take from that. Commanders are now 2-2 two and two this season, and they go against Chicago on Thursday here at home. And for more on the Commanders, stick around. We're going to hear more from the game night crew, and that's coming up at 12:30. University of Maryland Terrapins earning a big win against Indiana. The Terps are now undefeated 5 and 0 this season. The 44 to 7 win marks the Terps' first 5 and 0 start since 2001. Maryland led by quarterback uh, Tonga Tuatailova, uh, Tua uh, his brother. <laughs> Pardon me, and he threw not one, not two, not three, not four. Five touchdowns in the win. Three of those touchdowns were caught by wide receiver uh, Tave Felton. Now the Terps move on to their next matchup against uh, number five ranked Ohio State. That's going to be a tough one. That's set to kick off on Saturday at noon. Well, read whatever you want, whenever you want. That's the message out of Arlington as this week kicks off Banned Book Week. The week serves as a means to put book censorship and intellectual freedom in the spotlight. The Arlington County Board recently adopted a resolution naming the Arlington Public Library as a book sanctuary, and you can find the list of most banned books at the library's website. A new law is now in place in Maryland, and they include changes to gun laws and domestic disputes. Now, one law repeals a spousal defense law that bans prosecuting a spouse for rape or certain sexual offenses. As for the new gun laws, you won't be able to carry a concealed handgun at schools, healthcare facilities, government buildings, or stadiums and hate crime victims will now be able to sue for crimes against them. And there's some changes to drug policies as well. Hospitals will be required to test for fentanyl to assess a patient's condition. And a law will grant immunity from legal consequence to someone experiencing a medical emergency after substance use. Former President Donald Trump is currently in a New York courtroom this afternoon, or actually, yet yeah, this afternoon, where he's, a civil trial has begun. A judge recently ruled the former president routinely committed fraud against banks, insurance companies, and other agencies by falsifying the value of his assets. It's part of a years-long investigation by New York Attorney General Lieta James. James is seeking $250 million in penalties, as well as a ban from the former president from doing business in New York. And here's what the former president had to say as he entered the building. We have a rogue judge. We have a racist attorney general who's a horror show who ran on the basis that she was going to get Trump before she even knew anything about me. She used this to run for governor. She failed in her attempt to run for governor. She had virtually no polling. She came back and she said, well, now I'll go back to get Trump again. And this is what we have. It's a scam. It's a sham. And we're bringing the updates to this trial as they come into the newsroom.